Severus Snape is one of the most complicated characters in the Harry Potter series, and over the years, there have been many arguments as to whether he's good or bad. I myself have made a video defending Snape, but I've also made videos that sort of bash him. The answer to if he's good or bad is simply, he's both. In this video, I'm going to explain 5 reasons why he's a good person, and 5 reasons why he's a bad person. I'm going to alternate between points, starting with bad, then good, then bad, and so on. Before we start, there are going to be major spoilers for the entire Harry Potter series, so you've been warned. Now, let's get the video started. Reason number one on why he's bad. He tortured Neville Longbottom to no end. Snape bullied the already insecure Neville any chance he got, and he did it so much in fact that Neville's worst fear was Snape himself. What frightens you most of all? Professor Snape. Sorry? Professor Snape. Professor Snape. <laughs> he regularly and unnecessarily targeted Neville with verbal taunts, threats, sarcasm, and malice, making Neville perform terribly in Snape's potion class. In one class where Snape had the kids make a shrinking solution, he told Neville that at the end of class, he would give Neville's toad Trevor a few drops of his finished product, which if Neville had done even slightly wrong, it would kill his toad. Luckily, Hermione whispered in Neville's ear what to do, something that made Snape scold Hermione as well as she spoiled the fun he was having with Neville. Snape affected Neville so much in potions class that when Neville took his potions OWL, he performed very well compared to usual solely because he didn't have the bullying Snape watching over him and making fun of him. And it wasn't just in his own classroom that he bullied Neville. He tried to do it in Lupin's class as well, only to be shut down by the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. Now, reason number one on why he's good, he saved Harry from Quirrell. In Harry's first year, Quirrell was the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, and to most, he seemed to be an innocent, stuttering man, but Snape saw past that. Quirrell had Voldemort attached to the back of his head, and on Voldemort's orders, he was attempting to get the Philosopher's Stone so that Voldemort could return. And on top of that, Voldemort also ordered Quirrell to kill Harry. Snape not only stopped Quirrell from getting the stone on Halloween, which led to his leg being mauled by the three-headed dog Fluffy, but he also performed the counter curse to save Harry during the Quidditch match when Quirrell was trying to kill him. I would have succeeded, even with Snape muttering his little counter curse. Snape was trying to save me. Snape on several occasions went after Quirrell and threatened him, ensuring not only Harry's safety and the school's safety, but the entire wizarding world, ensuring that Voldemort did not return. Reason number two on why he's bad, he called Lily Evans a mudblood. Snape was best friends with Lily for years, but this all ended when he called Lily a mudblood in front of an entire crowd of students. This is the absolute worst thing you can call a muggle-born, which Lily was. It's seen as a horrible racial slur that should never be uttered out loud. What makes the situation worse is that he called her this right after Lily stood up for him and told James Potter and his friends to stop bullying him. This moment would later be referred to as Snape's worst memory, because that was the day he lost his best friend forever. Reason number two on why he's good, he introduced Lily to the Wizarding World. While the last point was how Snape and Lily's friendship ended, this point marks where their friendship began. Snape told Lily that she was a witch, and he told her all about the Wizarding World, from Hogwarts to different spells, different creatures, and even some dark parts of the Wizarding World, like Dementors and Azkaban. Snape doing this made Lily very excited about her future career at Hogwarts, and it also gave her a friend that she could lean on when entering this foreign world. Because of Snape and his friendship, she didn't have to do it by herself. Reason number three on why Snape is bad, he told Voldemort the prophecy. This might be one of the worst things Snape ever did. Snape at this point was a Death Eater, one of Voldemort's loyal followers, and he overheard the first half of the prophecy that would later be about Harry and Voldemort. By telling Voldemort the prophecy, it made the Dark Lord realize that he had to kill this infant. Snape didn't give this infant the slightest thought until he realized it was Lily's son, something that made Dumbledore say that Snape disgusted him. There were a lot of factors to this that didn't have anything to do with Snape, but ultimately, Snape making Voldemort aware of the prophecy led to the deaths of Lily and her husband James Potter. Had he not told Voldemort of this, Voldemort never would have heard the prophecy, meaning he never would have gone after the Potters. Reason number three on why he's good, he tried to save the Potters. Snape telling Voldemort the prophecy led to Lily and James' death, but Snape gave up everything trying to save them. He first begged Voldemort not to kill Lily, but he of course didn't listen. So Snape went behind Voldemort's back and went to Albus Dumbledore, something that's basically a death sentence if Voldemort ever found out. 
Snape begged Dumbledore to hide and protect the Potters. When Dumbledore asked what Snape would give him in return, Snape said, Another. A promise that would go on to change his life. Ultimately, even though Snape tried to save them by having Dumbledore hide them, Lily and James put their faith in the wrong person, just as Snape had with Voldemort, and Lily and James met their end. Reason number four on why Snape is bad? He sent Sirius to his death. Now obviously, he didn't literally send him to his death, but to me, many fans, and even Harry, he might as well have. Snape and Sirius have a long history, one that goes back to their school days where both tormented the other. However, that was when they were kids. Snape took this rivalry into their adulthood, and Snape went after Sirius, knowing his biggest insecurities and weaknesses. At the time, Sirius was forced to be locked up in Grimmauld Place, as he was a wanted criminal for a crime that he did not commit. Snape knew that Sirius wanted to be a part of the fight with the Order. It was part of who Sirius was as a person. He wanted to be in the center of the action, and it was killing him to just stay in one place not able to do anything. Instead of just leaving well enough alone, the way he should have as he was a grown man, Snape took any opportunity that he had to taunt Sirius, saying that he wasn't taking an active role in the fight, as all he did was sit at home. So when Snape warned the Order that Harry and company were in the Department of Mysteries, the combination of Snape goading Sirius about not doing anything, and Snape being the one to tell them about the coming mission, Sirius wanted to save Harry, but also prove Snape wrong and join the battle. And unfortunately, we all know how that ended. Sirius hadn't seen action in so long, so he was rusty when it came to dueling, and he was so eager, perhaps too eager thanks to Snape goading him, and when he took on his cousin Bellatrix, he met his ultimate downfall. At the end of Book 5, Harry was furious with Snape for goading Sirius, and as I said before, Harry blamed Sirius' death in large part to Snape. Reason number 4 on why Snape is good, he risked his life to become a triple agent. Going back to the promise that Snape made Dumbledore, saying that he would do anything in return for Dumbledore saving Lily, Dumbledore held him to that. After Snape proved that he was loyal to Dumbledore by turning on Voldemort right before his downfall, Dumbledore trusted Snape. Going forward, Snape and Dumbledore formed a plan, Dumbledore knowing that Voldemort would eventually make a return. Their plan was to make Snape a triple agent. So when Voldemort did make its return at the end of Book 4, Dumbledore told Snape that it was time, and asking him if he was ready, Snape said, I am. Snape pretended to be loyal to Voldemort, and said that he was a double agent, giving the Dark Lord loads of information on Dumbledore. However, it was all information that Dumbledore told Snape it was okay to give. Snape was playing Voldemort, still loyal to Dumbledore despite what he told the Dark Lord. Lying to the Dark Lord, who was very skilled at legilimency, or reading minds, was incredibly dangerous. Snape spent the next three years manipulating the Dark Lord, playing both sides, and ensuring Harry's safety, which was an almost impossible task that he somehow pulled off. It wasn't easy though. He eventually told Dumbledore that he couldn't do it anymore, but Dumbledore held him to his promise that he made all those years ago. Have you ever considered that you ask too much, that you take too much for granted? Has it ever crossed your brilliant mind that I don't want to do this anymore? This was in every way what made Snape a hero in many people's eyes, including my own. And the final reason why Snape is bad, he had an unfair prejudice against Harry. From the first minute he met Harry, he treated him differently than every other student, and this was all because Snape disliked Harry's father, James. Mr. Potter. Our new celebrity. He did not even give Harry a chance to prove himself. He just treated him terribly from day one. Snape jumped to conclusions about Harry, went out of his way to torment him, embarrass him, and most of all, punish him. He gave Harry unfair detentions, and he always went out of his way to get Harry into trouble, once even yelling at Cornelius Fudge, the Minister of Magic, that Harry was disobedient and a bad kid. Snape even stopped giving Harry occlumency lessons when he knew that this was the only way that Harry could keep Voldemort out of his mind, something that Dumbledore had told him was so important. Though he was protecting Harry for many years, he still treated Harry like dirt any chance he got, all because of a petty children's rivalry with Harry's father. And the final reason on why he's good, his unwavering love for Lily. Lily Evans was the love of Snape's life, and he spent most of his adult life trying to protect her son. Everything he did, becoming a triple agent, risking his life, lying to Voldemort, it was all for Lily. 
His Patronus turned into a doe, just like Lily, showing that his love was eternal, as only true love could change someone's Patronus to match the person they were infatuated with. And the fact that he still had her doe Patronus close to 20 years after her death speaks volumes of how deep those feelings for Lily were. His love for Lily was also the key to his success in being a triple agent. Voldemort could read anybody's mind. But the reason why Voldemort never realized that Snape wasn't on his side was because the thing that drove Snape was something that Voldemort could not understand. Love. Snape's feelings for Lily are one of his most redeeming qualities. Snape had his good moments, but he also had his not so good moments. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Is Snape good or is he bad? Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and more of this little dude. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured on the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching and look out for more great Movie Flame videos on the way.